Alrighty, folks, coming at you again with some more Countess Bruiser gameplay. This is part two of our two-part Countess Bruiser gameplay series where I'm doing post-commentary over it. This time we are landing against a Gideon. Wanted to give you guys a couple updates here as we're getting started. Um, as I said in the description of that part one, we did lose a good bit of footage by a accidental PlayStation shutdown when uh, that was going to be intended for the Friday video. Hopefully this video is going up Saturday, but we have been having, uh, we were getting hit with this hurricane right now, so who knows on power outages and internet outages. So thanks for being patient. Glad you guys are enjoying the videos. And also give me something in the comments about do you like these post-game commentaries or how do you compare them to the live commentaries? Um, neither neither one of those preferences are going to hurt my feelings. I know that's a little bit uh, different doing the post game commentary, and it is more work in the first place. So you know nothing nothing against either either preference there. You know I like doing both of them for you guys. Want to do some more tips videos, but like I said, lost some footage here recently. But we've got a mid lanes matchup, or like how to counter pick or, you know, preferred opponents for each hero in mid lane coming here soon, as well as an armor breakpoints type video coming out. We're talking about how much armor you need to build in certain situations for certain enemy team comps and stuff like that. So we're working on those tips videos, and hopefully we can get them out here in the coming weeks. And then, of course, Monday we're looking at a Quang spreadsheet build video. So... That's going to do with these updates. Here we go in this Countess Bruiser Countess Part 2. As I talked about in the first one, I like to build Countess a little bruisier, a little tankier than a, a full assassin type Countess. We see this this Gideon has not actually made it to lane yet, and uh, that is going to be to his detriment because we end up having a pretty easy time with him in this game. Gideon, I wouldn't say, is a really... Uh, difficult or easy matchup for Countess. It's kind of a middle-of-the-road matchup. You know, has the teleport to get out, so he is hard to catch out and burst down as Countess. But at the same time, if you have your ult and you can drop it on him before he gets the teleport off, then you can probably finish him a lot of times. So we'll, uh, we'll break this one down as we go. Like I said in the first one, building tankier was going a cult crest. Sometimes I like to go Magician's Crest still and build Lifebinder first item, but going Occult Crest and then building a cooldown item first tends to be uh, just as good. It depends on how tanky you want to go. We'll put the final endgame build here up on the screen so you can see what we're targeting here. But uh, going with the Occult, oh yeah, get a little dive and poke on this Gideon as he's, he's down on us, and then Seraph ends up jumping on us here, but she's not going to be able to get anything from us, so it's all good. Did have to use our blink, but it's definitely worth not dying. In this game, I have got a friend playing our carry. He's actually playing Zink's carry, which is why this is in a standard match. But there, uh, there are no mirror matches, so it's uh, no different there than a normal ranked match. There's no uh, duplicate heroes on either team. And here we are taking a look, see if we can get anything out of duo. We really can't, so we're just going to back and go ahead and get some more mana regen online. We're already kind of ahead of this Gideon because he showed up late to lane. And uh, that's going to be... We're, we're going to do our best to punish him for that because you got to take advantage of every <laughs> everything you can get at mid lane sometimes just to, uh, just to have an advantage because you're getting rotated on a lot in mid lane and it really is dependent on how good their jungle is going to be on how hard of a time you're going to have in mid lane most of the time but like i said we'll do a video here soon talking about mid lane matchups that first one that part one was against a morgesh and that's kind of again a middle of the road matchup for gideon probably or for uh, for countess probably one of the better matchups because she has to kind of get close to you and you need, uh, it's preferable to have a mid laner that you wants to get close to you because you're going to need to get close to them to do damage as Countess. 
now. Here, I mean, Gideon's already just out of mana, so we're trying to keep that in mind, and we're trying to keep in mind we want to poke him when he's out of mana because he's not going to be able to box us back or trade with us very effectively. But at the same time, with the minion wave being close to his tower like that, I know that he can just teleport out and be very safe. So we're just going to stay on top of it. Like I said, we've got an interesting comp with a Zinx carry and an Argus as the support with them. And then solo lane, we have got a Shinbi while they have an Aurora. So kind of an odd comp overall. Seraph jungle as well. You don't see as much anymore. We do have a Rampage jungle, so that's kind of a, a, a normal meta pick, but also have got some uh, some Rampage jungle gameplay coming out here soon. I think you guys will enjoy. It was a really fun match. I don't play jungle very much, but when I do, I tend to uh, do pretty okay with it, so be able to look out for that Rampage jungle match here uh, in the next week or so. Trying to dive on this Gideon, couldn't quite get the lock on for the teleport before he gets his teleport off. But again, he's just out of mana. I mean, he's just burning through his mana trying to keep up with the clear. Countess has really good clear. You see, I'm trying to hit him with my wave whenever I use it to hit uh, the minion wave. Try to hit him with my wave, get the blink up onto him here and just put a ton of damage on him. Go ahead and ult him, because I was thinking it may be able to finish him, but our ult is just level one, so it really doesn't do that much damage. And it does force his blink out, because he couldn't use his normal teleport out, because he's out of mana. So keep an eye on your opponent mid laner for sure. Mana is very important at the mid lane roll, because, you know, a lot of the mages just simply can't do anything if they don't have mana. Our Shinbi ends up getting first blood on Aurora there. So that's good to see. You don't want to see an Aurora get out of hand because Aurora is really frustrating to deal with with anyone. Countess, you should be able to deal with an Aurora most of the time by kind of teleporting around her and stuff. But at the same time, uh, you get hit with that freeze, you get hit with that root. You know, what can you really do after, <laughs> after that? So. Clearing that wave does put us a level up on this Gideon, and then Rampage is coming out. And uh, you see I turned around prematurely there because I figured Gideon was going to teleport out really quick, but it took him a second to get the teleport off. Rampage thankfully leaves this bug for us, which is good because we started a cult crest, so we need those bugs. We need to challenge those bugs to keep our mana up. Putting a ton of damage on Gideon and going to force him to teleport out there. Um, luckily, a Colt Crest can work out pretty well on Countess because that wave, her wave uh, ability. Oh, here we go. Taking a look at the Fang Pit here. We're going to go ahead and just cut off that Wraith and make sure he can't get into the fight. Zinx chases him down. And then our wave ends up killing the Seraph there. And we're going to go ahead and stick to this Fang Tooth, even though Rampage got pushed out, because we would really like this Fang Tooth. And I should be able to uh, sustain myself pretty well, especially with Zinx here. So yeah, as I was saying, that, that Blood Wave ability of Countess is really good for securing the River Bugs, as well as her Teleport. So you generally shouldn't have too much of a time. I mean, one of the easiest mid laners to contest the river bugs with, for sure. It's just the, uh, the wave or the shadow step should both uh, one-shot the river bugs, even just with a couple levels on them or just a couple items built. And it can give a... We give the missing mid call because it looked like Gideon was heading to solo lane here. And Gideon does end up popping out in solo lane. Um, but it looks like our Shinbi made it out, so good job, uh, good job from that Shinbi. Good job. <laughs> I'm gonna give him a good job. And that's what I was talking about right there, the, uh, the Evertide or the Shadow Step can both just one-shot these, uh, river bugs. Even though mine is, uh, well, mine is leveled up because I leveled it first, but with just a few items or just a few levels, you can one-shot those river bugs with them from a good distance away. Gives you really good 
contesting potential of those. And now this Steel and Seraph are pushed way up, so we're going to try to get on them here. Do force that Seraph's blink out. Rampage tries to hit the long range rock there. Can we go ahead and just blink in? And we cannot quite catch Steel with our ult. Wanted to try to like immobilize him there so that Rampage could get on him, but could not quite catch him. Still a decent rotate into duo, except for the fact that our Rampage is sticking around there and is now like getting chased by their steel on their red buff side, so. We make it back to mid and Shinbi ends up going for a rotate here onto Gideon, but you're not gonna get Gideon. I mean Gideon is one of the if not the safest mid laner with that teleport, so he gets out for free as he's pretty much always going to. And we are just waiting here, gonna clear an extra wave before we go back and grab our time warp. So yeah, if you're going a cult crest, you kinda need to go time warp or something with mana. Sustain as your first item. You could go Caustic or something, but Time Warp is really the ticket. And then we are going to go for a Spellbreaker targeting here as our second item. So in this one, we go more tanky than in the part one. In this one, we're building four armor items total. So not just the Spellbreaker and Golem's Gift, which are kind of more standard build items. We're also we're picking up extra armor items on top of those. And you can see we, uh, Countess, Countess just does big damage. Countess has an easy time clearing, really easy to grab these bugs quickly and just keep moving. We're kind of zoning this Gideon here so that we can get a free look at that second bug and see how quick it is to jump down, get those bugs, and just be right back in lane. But that's one of the biggest uh, advantages to Countess. That's one of the reasons I like her so much is... Uh, the mobility and the ability to contest and get quick poke. I mean, look at that. That's uh, nearly half of Gideon's health just with one dive combo. And we don't even have any items online. I mean, we just have time warp online, so... A one-level lead. And now we're just taking another look at him because we've already got him low on that first one. So we want to keep the pressure on him because we know that if we can get him low enough, then we can get an ult off on him. And we'll go ahead and go for the ult there and then yeah, the circular blade siphon does finish him off quite easily. So he really was not paying too much attention to uh, or at least respecting my damage output because he should have teleported out as soon as I'm running towards him. He should teleport out and stand farther away. Seraph's coming up here to try to help him, but at this point I'm three levels over this Seraph because I've been farming pretty efficiently, and she uh, has just been in jungle, so it's not been as easy for her to get farm. So, four two zero here at the thirteen minute mark. So we're not running away with it by any means. We did get the first Fang Tooth, which gives us a nice little head start. We'll make that 5-0 to with Argus taking out their steel. But still, only 5 takedowns in the first 13 minutes here. Uh, team's playing pretty cautious. cautious. That makes it 6-0 with the Rampage takedown. And then we are calling for another Fang take here. Right at the respawn time. And Rampage is all about it, and Duo is all about it, because they just cleaned up the duo lane and the Seraph, so. Generally, like I said in the first one, I don't like, or like I've said in previous videos, I don't like posting super one-sided games, um, or games where people leave early and stuff like that, but wanted to do this one as a part two because, ooh, nice little rock from that. Yeah, we tried to get over there onto him, but nice rock from that rampage. I wanted to go ahead and do this part too because it, it matched uh, a more extreme case of the part one video where you're, you know, I'm not sure how many of you guys are building armor on Countess. Let me know. You know, I know it's standard issue for people to build armor on other melee heroes that do magical damage like Aurora, Shinbi, Quang. You're definitely building armor on. But how many of you guys actually build armor on your Countesses? 
We unfortunately drop down the ledge on the teleport there. We're going to go ahead and go for the old. And just quite can't get the Gideon. He teleports out just in time. Uh, but at this point, we're just kind of rolling him. They do pick up a couple kills there. With um, our Shinbi going down in solo. And then our Argus going down. And Rampage is also one hit here. So we're going to try to rotate over and make sure nothing happens. Looks like they're backing out. So we're just going to back as well. Get our Spellbreaker online. Spellbreaker is really good. And also, starter-wise, we're picking up Tempest because I'm already planning on going more armor, more survivability. And uh, having that Tempest will be able to keep us in the fight for longer. And if we're in melee range, it's going to deal decent damage as well. So, Coming up here past the 15-minute mark, we are 2-0-1. Oh, and, and our team has 6 kills versus their 2. Gideon foresaw me coming in there, but we're not going to let him get out of here for free. We put some good poke on him and then shadow step out. But he's trying to poke us back. He's acting all big and bad now. Yeah, even though he knows we've got a two level lead on him and we've been bullying him this whole time, he's trying to put some back on us. Again, we're not going to let him have it for free, and that takes him to half health as Steel comes out on us. And we have to blink out to make sure that we don't get caught in the stun lock or something crazy there. Gideon easily could have altered us, and then we caught one more steel stun, and we, we would die quite easily. Um, we almost take out the Gideon just with our shadow step onto him. Like I said, uh, we're healing a lot here. I mean, we're still full health. After taking that damage from the Gideon poke, we are still full health. Just because of Countess's natural life stealing and uh, siphon abilities. We're taking a look here at Solo to see what we can find. Link onto this Aurora real quick. And try to get a piece of her, but I mean, she's going to slide out every time. Very safe hero with that escape ability and the route to peel people off of her. And now we're heading back to mid. So back in mid here. Gideon has not made it back yet. Kimby is chasing down that Seraph. Right there near their blue buff. And now hopefully she's going to be able to make it out. We're going to head over here and take a look at Duo again because this Rafe and Steel are pushed up. Rafe does pick off our Zinx carry there. But he is not going to be ready for this amount of damage coming at him. He does get out with that sneaky, uh, sneaky invisibility. But look, we're hitting Steel there for 319 is not bad at all considering we have no pin built uh, so countess does good damage i mean countess does big damage that's why it's kind of enticing to build more armor on her because the, her base damage from abilities is so high you don't necessarily need to build six uh, damage items or whatever our spellbreaker immunes that ability and then we stick on this gideon as long as we can we get him to like half health there before he can really get any damage on us back so uh, just kind of bullying this Gideon. You know, as safe as Gideon is, uh, it's going to take a good Gideon player or one that's built well and spamming their abilities to really keep you down as Countess. We catch him with that wave as well. I mean, if they build Tainted, you know, always build to your opponents, as I say, but if they build Tainted Scepter, I'm going to have a harder time. Gideon looked like he was coming down there to try to catch our Rampage. He actually gets blown out of his ult there, it looks like, by uh, the orb itself. And then we lock down that Aurora with an ult to try to keep her stationary long enough for our team to get onto her. And then we hit our little Tempest, even though it wasn't quite necessary or really going to benefit us in the 1v3 with our team being the 3. But Rampage makes it out, we do get the kill. And it takes the kill count to 10 to 3. Uh, getting a little bit more one-sided here, as we have also got two Fang Tooths. It's going to be a, a tough claw back for them at this point. And uh, but they have a Wraith, so you never know if he just ends up being a really good Wraith player or a really good Seraph in jungle. They could easily start sweeping. Steel diving on our duo here. We're coming around. This Wraith's already low, so I have a pretty good feeling we're going to be able to take him out. We do miss the wave. The initial wave there, and Argus is able to finish him off. So 
it's all good. They didn't. They weren't under too much threat of takedown with that wraith already being low. Now with Rampage here, we want to go ahead and look at a third thing if we can get it. That would pretty much secure the win for us. If we are uh, ahead on kills like this in 3-0 in Fangtooth. For some reason, Argus just stays in duo and starts pushing up duo, which I don't care if he wants to die to distract him. That's fine with me. We'll take the third Fang, but Argus really did not need to do that because we were going to get Fang either way. Gideon also has Spellbreaker built now, so he's immuning. And then I wasn't going to dive that Gideon or full dive that Gideon. But then uh, I saw Rampage hit him with the rock, so I just turned around and went back for him, and we do end up catching him out and chasing him down there. Uh, with the And somehow I don't actually get the finish with my Shadow Step. I thought I was going to be enough to finish, but here we go. We've got enough gold now to get Gollum's Gift online. I like Gollum's Gift. It gives you mana regen as well as the, uh, the stacking armor and everything. And then fourth item, we are going to target Void Helm because... They've got a lot of magic damage on their team between an Aurora solo, obviously the Gideon in mid, and then the Steel doing okay damage, decent damage. So Void Helm will help us out, plus it'll boost our healing to even more extremes than it already is. We're at seven stacks on Countess's passive now with four kills and three assists. So that Void Helm will get us good value. On our life stealing, here another example of how fast you can clear these river bugs, just hitting one and then running right over and catching the other because that uh, that tide is really strong for grabbing those. I mean, and you can also shadow step to them and, and kill them instantly as well. Shinbi dives this tower and finishes it. So we're gonna come over here, and make sure she doesn't get jumped on. Basically, is the only reason we're over here. Um, but. You know, taking a look here, I don't think we're going to be able to get this tower anyway, so... Not really worried about it. Poke this Seraph. She definitely doesn't want to dive us. If she's smart. And then we'll head back to mid here to take a look at Gideon again. I have lost my tower by now, but it's really no big deal. We are just kind of rolling them. Duo picks up another kill on Rafe there. And Rampage is thinking of sticking around for the steal. Gideon, <laughs> Gideon, again, acting like he's all big and bad, going to poke us back. And the only reason he's doing it is because Aurora is there. So, uh, as, we're, as well as Seraph. So we go ahead and try to blink out. Uh, tries to jump on us there and catch us with another root. Look at that healing, though. I mean, the Siphon catching both of them and healing me right back up. Um, they're overextended, so Shinbi is able to come in and pick up the Gideon there. Rampage chases down the Seraph and finishes her. And then now we're going to chase the Aurora for a little bit and see if we can catch her. It looks like we're not going to be able to, or it looks like I'm not going to be able to at least. So I go ahead and divert off to come poke this Steel and push all these minions into his tower. Still hitting steel for around 300 damage despite the fact we have not built any pin. And we are able to pressure down the tower with a steel and wraith here. Uh, hard to say what this wraith wants to do. We had our Shinbi still there in the jungle so I don't mind standing this far up and feeling pretty safe about it. Our team has yet to take a tier 2 tower. So we're trying to, you know, I'm trying to figure out which one we're going to go for. We definitely have to get one here at some point. Um, but with Shinbi backing, Gideon rotating onto us, trying to play a little cautiously here. And we do see the get, get the Gideon coming around for us like that. I'll be back shortly. And we've got 2200 gold on us, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the back here and get closer to Void Helm being completed. So 16 to 4, pretty one-sided with us having three fangs. Uh, but, you know, a good Countess game for me, a good bulky armor type Countess game for me. So something for you guys to consider on your Countess plays. 
do you want to build some armor items? This Gideon, again, acting aggressive despite the fact that I have a three-level lead on him. Uh, don't do that, guys. I know Gideon is a safe hero, and he may be one of the ones you can get away with it. Yeah, now he's, he's wised up and standing way back, but... Knowing how to play from ahead as well as play from behind is pretty key in every role. Here, you know, we're going to take advantage of the fact that we're playing from ahead and we're going to poke this Gideon down. Takes him a while to even burn our spell shield. And then now Aurora is going to come behind us. Looks like she actually missed her ult there that she tried to hit. Gideon comes back in. Uh, like I said, know how to play from ahead and behind. Don't come back in when you're one hit and try to do something fancy when there's, you know, what at the very most he was going to be able to contribute to uh, Aurora killing me. And he was probably going to die either way, so uh, no, you know, whenever you're going into engagements, whether you're ahead or behind, know what you want to get out of that engagement. Because, you know, if you look at that, at uh, Gideon coming back in, he really did not stand to gain anything from coming back into that engagement. He was going to die no matter what, so, was, uh, you know, think about what you want when you're, like, that applies to when you're in jungle and you're doing ganks, you know, when you're in mid and you're 1v1-ing, oh, here we go, Rampage is sticking, sticking fangs, so we're going to try to stick it with him, we're going to decide if we want to zone somebody off, the Wraith's hitting me pretty hard, he hits me with a rewind as well, so... We get canceled out of our ult there. And then Rafe links through the entire crowd of people to try to get the final shot on me. That plays into what I was just talking about a second ago. At that point, Rafe was almost certainly going to die. I would say was certainly going to die. Uh, so blinking out maybe not even saved him. Might as well just blink in and take me out with it. That's kind of good awareness from that Rafe. Uh, knowing that his steel was going to die and that he was going to die too, might as well just try to take one out with you. But know what you want to get out of engagements, I would think, is one of the big pieces of commentary I want you guys to take away from this game. This Gideon did not have much that he was going to be able to get out of engagements with me, but he was still forcing them for some reason. So we finish Voidhelm here. And then we're trying to basically decide, hey, you know, I'm going to grab another physical armor item. Where do I want it to be? Shall we? Um, so we're trying to figure out what do we want it to be. And I was like, well, you know, we're going to have Tempest. We're like, we've already got Tempest built, so I could go Stonewall. But at the same time, I could just go Fire Blossom and get a little bit of extra AoE damage because I will be in melee range of the enemy team the majority of the time, so might as well just throw Fire Blossom on this build. We're, uh, we're running them down pretty hard, so it, what physical armor item I wanted to grab there really didn't matter. I probably could have grabbed, like, Citadel, even though it wasn't really going to benefit me much. Um, or, like I said, Stonewall, Tainted Guard would have been probably better. But we're taking a look back here at Duo. Don't mind playing very aggressive because, you know, I'm, I'm playing from ahead. When you're playing ahead, play more aggressive. Super long range stun from the Argus there. Good job. We're going to try to catch up. Our Spellbreaker immunes. Ooh, nice. Trying to stick to this Wraith. Can't quite get anything on him, but Argus ends up finishing him off. Our Spellbreaker immune the steel charge on the way there, so we we're able to just keep running and blink onto that Wraith when normally we would not be able to. So that's another example of good value from Spellbreaker. Highly recommend it against teams with heavy CC comps because they allow you to pull off plays like that that you just simply could not do if you did not have uh, the, the um, ability immune from Spellbreaker. We're keeping pressure over here on this left lane because our mid lane is kind of fighting and we're just uh, wanting to keep them pushed in as much as we can. Or as much as we can, I should say. Argus trying to be pretty aggressive here as well. And now it looks like we're going to be able to cleanly get this tower. Sarah jumps in. We ult the Gideon to cancel him out of his ult to try to save our Argus. And now our spell shield is back up. They weren't able to cancel it out yet. And anytime you see that pop back up, you just have that extra layer of safety. So now I know that even if Steel 
Uh, he's wanting to jump on me and stun me there. Um, I'm pretty much in the clear. We keep in on him there. I'm looking to ignore steel and hit their damage dealers the best we can. Gideon, of course, teleports out there. And now we don't really have an option but to target steel. For some reason, my spellbreaker is not frocking when I'm getting hit with abilities here. I don't know what kind of glitchiness was going on there. Because the spell... Uh, and the spell shield animation is up, but if you look in the timer, the timer's just now about to go off. So I think there was a discrepancy there between... Yep, yeah, now, now I get hit and it goes away. I think there's a discrepancy there between the animation coming back, or the graphic coming back of the bubble, and the, uh, the actual spell breaker, which got nerfed to 60 seconds not being in sync. So that's kind of an interesting... You know, interesting <laughs> notice there. You know, there are still bugs going on in this game. It is a small development crew, so it's, you know, it is what it is. It's all good. We'll see if that if it pops back up here again at the 45 second mark. While there's another 15 seconds before it's actually functioning, we're going for orb here. Uh, we've got them pushed in pretty hard. Even though that they are they are all alive, we should be able to win the orb fight. Now this time the, sh the spell bubble does not come up early, so it must have been some weird, uh, something weird that caused it to pop back up last time. We're burning orb down way fast, looks like they're not even going to be able to show up in time. And then we've got over 3k gold on us at this point, so... Might as well go ahead and back and finish up some more armor. Like I said, Fire Blossom is built. And then I was thinking, well, let's just go ahead and target um, some extra healing. So we'll just target Magnify again as our sixth item, similar to what I did in the first part. Uh, you know, Magnify not at all necessary here, not at all uh, needing that extra healing when we already have healing uh, built in in our passive, as well as it getting boosted from Void Helm. Uh, they're fighting, some people are fighting around Shinbi over there near Orb, but we're just going to go for another Fang Tooth and absolutely secure this game, being our fifth Fang Tooth to zero. Gideon, again, acting like he's going to show up here. Um, you know, keep in mind what you want out of engagements, guys, because what could that Gideon possibly want to get out of this <laughs> engagement where our whole team is here and has Orb Prime? Uh, he's not going to steal Fang Tooth. He's just going to get canceled out of his ult if he tries to ult. So, you know, what even is the point? You know, keep in mind what you want to get out of your engagements before you start them. If you're thinking, and, and also stick to what you want to get, I think is another thing I should point out. Nice little lag spike there. Um, if you're looking at an engagement and you're thinking of, you know, ganking as the jungler, and you show up, gank, get the kill that you wanted to get, get out. I mean, get out, take the win, and get out. Don't don't adjust your goals. Oh, we got one person. Now let's see if we can get two, and then put yourself in an advan in a bad spot where the other team has the advantage and they pick you back off for it. Um, you know, keep in mind what you want and don't don't uh, give them back anything if you're able to win the engagement. And then here we just clean them up. We have a ton of minions pushed in. We have Primal Fang. We've got Orb. And we closed the game out with no difficulty. So it was a little bit one-sided of a match. Uh, mainly because we kind of pushed the advantage early and then kind of kept them from getting back into it. We had a decent jungler. We had a decent support. Um, the Shinbi was good too. She ended up going 9-1 and one out of the solo lane on a standard Prophecy Megacosm start with Oathkeeper and Magnify. So yeah, she was hitting hard. Um, five and two and with seven assists from our Zinx carry. And then taking a look at the in-game stats here. 37k for us, again, top in the, top on the team and top in the lobby as a Shinbi or as a Countess with four armor items built. So, I uh, don't think that you have to build full you know, assassin, six damage items, countess. That's what I want you guys to take away from these two countess games. 
don't think that you need to build full damage countess to do damage one or two be a asset to your team building armor on countess helps you survive more get more damage out in fights stay in fights longer keep after the back line for more uh, duration or keep after the back line through a series of stuns or abilities getting dropped on you you can just stay after them and you see right there i do top damage in the lobby while building void helm <laughs> you know and fire blossom on countess so don't shy away from bruiser countess let me know in the comments what you guys build on countess do you ever build armor on her do you prefer to go with the full assassin type countess where you're building you know megacosm caustica you know maybe combustion um noxia you know and all that kind of stuff do you prefer that build or do you ever try building armor on her and how does it work out for you so thanks for watching like i said check out the part one of this series if you did miss it it was a much tighter game a much more back and forth type game we were laning against a morgesh which was a lot more on the ball than this gideon who uh, kind of got a slow start and then we punished him for it so thanks for watching thanks for being patient on the release schedule guys like i said we got the hurricane hitting here so i'm not sure when this will be out i'm targeting saturday for it and then i'm targeting monday for the quang build spreadsheet but it's all going to be dependent on if we lose power or if we lose internet and whatnot so we'll see you on the next one thanks for supporting the channel and subscribing we're over 350 subscribers now so it's been awesome we keep making videos keep playing predecessor i think it's really a great game and i'm happy that we uh, we have it to play so We'll see you on the next one.